if a move like Rook E7 is played, then I can take it. Because Rook takes isn't a move, because of Rook F8 and his mate. So my opponent would have to play Queen takes. Don't worry, that's a brilliant move, but there is more brilliant moves coming up. Alright, today's game we're going to be going over is a Blitz game that I played yesterday, which on the surface was not the best of games in all honesty, but the ending is kind of wild, so you're going to want to stick around for the end of that. The game starts with E4, E6, B3, and I have loads of videos on my channel in this opening. It's a personal favourite of mine amongst other openings, and you may be wondering, Alex, what the hell is this? This is a ridiculous opening. Why are you allowing d5? Aren't you going to have to take? Well, yeah, you could take, but you could also play bishop b2 and completely ignore your opponent stri striking in the center. And yes, you give your pawn away, but you're going to win it back. Knight c3. If your opponent goes f5 and tries to hold on to the pawn like this, you can play f3 or d3. Personally, I prefer f3. Force your opponent to take, and yes, you go down a pawn, but look at the development. This is some fantastic development, and one of the big problems for black is the fact that he can't push e5 very easily. You're going to play moves like bishop c4, queen e2, castle queen side, rook e1, rook f1. These pawns are very weak, e6 in particular. And the knight can make use of these weak dark squares to get into the opponent's territory. Not to mention the bishop becoming unleashed on this long diagonal at some point. So it's very hard for black to maintain the pawn. Therefore, my opponent plays knight f6, defending the pawn, and I go queen e2. Now there is only one way to defend this pawn now, which is queen d4. And you could castle queenside here and set up discoveries with the knight once your king defends the bishop. But personally, I prefer f3 and just sacrificing the pawn for a tempo on the queen. Queen retreats to a square like b6, queenside castle. This is some incredible development. I want to play moves like g4, g5 to harass this knight. Play moves like rook e1. It's a very easy position to play with white. You are a pawn down, yes, and as opposed to the previous variation, you don't have massive positional compensation in terms of the pawns being stuck on f5 and e6. But I still think this is far more practical to play for the white pieces. So, my opponent goes bishop d7. And the point is that he wants to get the bishop onto c6. To start challenging for the diagonal after I take. He starts with bishop e7 because if he goes bishop c6 straight away then knight takes f6 check defended by my bishop so queen takes isn't a move and he has to take with the g pawn which just weakens his king side. My bishop's staring down at f6 and the black king is going to struggle to find safety castling on the king side and the pawn structure is a bit ruined. So, instead bishop e7. So if I take, then bishop takes, and this is just a bad position for me, because the whole point was that I get a nice bishop on the long diagonal. And if I take, then I end up trading it off. So, queenside castle. Bishop c6, forcing me to do something about my knight. Again, I don't want to take and offer a trade, because I want the advantage of having the bishop on the long diagonal. So f3. If he takes me, I'm going to take back with the f-pawn, freeing up the f3 square for my knight, play a move like d4 maybe. I'm also staring at the g7 pawn now with my bishop. I'll probably bring my queen over to the king side to open up my bishop to get on to probably e2, c4, maybe play something like d4, bishop d3, e5 which will shut off this bishop, but it would open up this bishop. So it's a nice position. And these are the themes of the opening. And if you don't know the opening, which, you know, most black players don't know it because it's kind of odd, then you've got an advantage as white because 
you know the ideas, right? So knight bd7, just developing. I go knight h3, and now my opponent takes me, because after f, f takes, I can't bring my knight to f3, because I've already committed to h3. So my opponent plays well with the move order, and I am attacking g7 now. So he goes bishop to f6. I go e5, attacking the bishop and forcing it back, also creating a bit of a wedge in the centre and stopping any piece from going to f6 to defend the king side. And then I go queen g4, attacking the g-pawn, because the bishop can't go to f6 and the knight can't go to f6, so there's no ideas of knight f6, queen takes g7, and rook g8 defended by the knight to kick my queen out and get an active rook on the g file. So my opponent goes g6. The computer preferred castling, which is kind of wild because you're just stepping into this big attack. And I mean, I'm going to be very happy if I get this kind of position. Computer calls bishop d3 a mistake, but sharp computer, sharp computer. Probably because of knight c5. Maybe I need d4 first to cover the c5 square. But whatever, that doesn't happen. g6 is played. I go knight f4, which apparently I should have played d4, but in this opening, d4 often isn't played, and the pawn is left on d2 to perform defensive duties. So, because my e5 pawn is quite well protected by my bishop, I'm not, I'm not too worried about d4. I'd rather try to activate my pieces right now. So knight f4, stares some of the weak light squares, maybe a potential sacrifice in the future. Knight b6, it's a good move, looking at the d5 square. h4, if my opponent plays a move like queen d7, I want to play something like h5 and try and break apart this kingside pawn structure. I know my opponent's probably going to castle queenside, but it still gives me play. Like, I can still try and like dominate my opponent on the king side you don't always need to go for checkmate right so h4 h5 my opponent stops this idea i drop my queen back to keep an eye on h4 because my opponent could actually take it especially if he's going to castle queenside i don't just want to give him a pawn knight d5 bishop d3 takes takes and queen d5 my opponent is ready to castle queenside. He's also looking at the g2 pawn. And this isn't easy for me to play here because my attacks kind of fizzled out. In the previous position, if my opponent hadn't have taken me, say he went something like queen d7, I was trying to look for some kind of sacrifices on the g6 or e6 squares, but I couldn't make anything work. Now, I was thinking after a move like a5, I might have ideas of bishop g6, pawn takes, queen g6. And this is looking very, very good for me. But the problem is, even if this happens, my opponent can just take on f4 first, or play rook g8, pinning the bishop. And, you know, say this happens, the king defends the rook, so it just doesn't work. So, my opponent takes anyway, stops all those ideas. If bishop takes g2 now, it's kind of scary, because my opponent doesn't have enough time to castle king side. And if he retreats the bishop back, I'm kind of lining up the cannons. And it's a bit difficult. My opponent has to be quite accurate not to get checkmated. So... You know, I'm very happy to give up the g2 pawn to get massive kingside play. Which is why my opponent doesn't take it and goes queen d5, preparing to castle queenside. Rook hf1, setting up queen takes, so rook f8. Even if my opponent castles, I can still take, because if something like rook f8, the bishop's hanging, and g6 is weak, and e6 is weak, it's not a playable move, so my opponent needs to defend, which he does. I go rook d to e1, which is apparently a blunder. Apparently I really need to defend this pawn with either rook f2, g3, or g4. 
looking back, I quite like g4. Going for something like this, and then h5 is on the cards to break apart the pawn structure like I was talking about earlier. I didn't see this. I played rook d to e1. I also have 7 seconds. My time usage in the past few videos has been absolutely horrible. Like, it's really bad. I need to improve it. Because <laughs> I'm playing very well, considering I've got no time. So imagine how I'd be playing if I did have time, you know? But anyway, we haven't even got to the best bit of the video yet, so I need to shut up. Queen takes g2. And the problem is, after rook f2, the queen should go to g4 and offer a trade of queens. And the only real way for me to not trade queens is something like queen h2. But then h4 ha hangs all the same. Or queen h6. But again h4 hangs. Rookie to f1. I'm down two pawns at this point. And my king is kind of vulnerable. If something like castles and I try to take, then I think I'm just getting mated. Yeah, queen e1. And my king is actually really under-defended because all my major pieces have just left the building, you know? So rook f2, my opponent goes queen d5 rather than queen g4, which was a very welcome move. I go bishop e4 attacking the queen, which is part of the reason I brought my rook to e1 to support this idea. And if my opponent plays a move like queen a5, then I can double my opponent's c pawns. And here I think I've got a lot of play. But the problem is my opponent can play queen c5 or queen b5 or queen d7 and keep an eye on the bishop. So if I take, then queen takes. And I'm just down the pawn. So it's 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 not great. I decide to play bishop d3 to avoid the trade of bishops. And my bishop is kind of protecting the king quite well. Supports the c2 pawn, closes off the d file. My opponent castles. King b1. Just because of the previous problems that I mentioned about back rank mates with my king on c1. On b1 I always have bishop c1 to pretend, pretend, protect, so it's it's a good move. Queen a5 is played, potentially looking at bishop a3 to try and trade the bishops, also eyeing up the d2 pawn, which is currently well defended, but it's an odd move. I play bishop c3 because I want to attack the queen, defend d2. And this is quite a nice structure with the bishops and pawns, because it gives my king an escape square, if necessary. But because the bishops defend the pawns and cut off all the files, it makes it difficult for my opponent to prove his pawn-up advantage. Because this is basically his extra pawn, and like, that's not going anywhere. This f-pawn is very weak. It's difficult for my opponent to actually prove why he's better. Because he's only minute, like a tiny bit better, even though he's up a whole pawn. Because I have positional counterplay. Uh, here I was expecting... Oh, sorry, not expecting bishop b4, because the queen defends b4. What am I saying? <sighs> Bloody hell. <laughs> a queen b6 is played. Just looking at the rook on f2. I go rook e to f1, which is a mistake because of bishop c5. Which attacks the rook and forces it to e2. Because this bishop covers g2. Bishop b5 is now played. Which forces a trade of bishops. Because I can't decline with bishop e4. Because the rook would hang. So we trade. And I go queen f3. Just shoring everything up. And then bishop e7. Eyes h4. So I go rook e4 defending. Don't worry. We're getting to the good bit. Rook d5 is played. Looking to double up. But I wasn't very worried because, again, the bishop holds d2 and it holds e5. So my opponent isn't really threatening anything. And I just go to rook f4 and I'm like, look, I'm going to win this pawn. And my opponent goes rook f to d8, which is a blunder. Now, he can't actually save this pawn. Computer wants queen e8. So if I take and everything gets traded here, then bishop takes h4 and he has two passed pawns. It's kind of scary, so I can't really trade everything. But he misses this. Again, we were, we were both very long on time. 
and he goes rook fd8, and I just march in. If bishop takes h4, which is exactly what my opponent plays, there is one move here that is like holds the advantage for white and kind of like refutes bishop takes h4. I'd encourage you to try and find it. I find it with like very low time, obviously, but it's important to try and see these moves. The move is queen h3. It's just a simple double attack. But amongst all the chaos in the position, you know, you might be thinking of eyeing up c7 or playing a move like rook f8. You just got to look for the simple tactics sometimes. The bishop is defended by g5. This also cuts off the bishop's defense of the rook and d7. So I'm not really a fan of this for black. I, I was more thinking of bishop g5. But either way, queen takes e6 would happen. King b8. And then I play queen e7, which is a really good move because I'm attacking c7 and I'm watching the rook. If a move like rook d7 is played, then I can take it because rook takes isn't a move because of rook f8 and its mate. So my opponent would have to play queen takes. Don't worry, that's a brilliant move, but there is more brilliant moves coming up. So queen takes would have to be played, and I can just take it. And he can't take back, because of back rank mate. Therefore, my opponent played rook e8, which is very odd. I was expecting rook c8, defending c7. But I do have rook f8 here, and he can't take because of mate. So, he opts for rook to e8. And here I actually miss rook f1, sorry, rook f8. Again, this is mate. If he gives a square for the king to escape to, I win a rook. And his only move is rook takes f1 check, forcing my rook to retreat. And he can't even take the queen back because this is mate. So, 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 so. I missed that. I go queen takes c7, king a8, and then I find, actually no I don't, I played rook 1f6, I, I just panicked massively, I don't know what this move was, um, I think I was worried about playing rook f8 because of this rook hanging, but the rook literally defends the other rook, so I'm just being an idiot, but I decide on rook 1f6 for whatever reason. My opponent can save the game here by bringing his other rook back or playing, no sorry, rook c5. I'm still winning, but I have to work a lot harder for it if my opponent finds one of these moves. But he doesn't. He plays g4, opening up an attack on this rook. And I would like to say that I played this to try and bait him into g4, but... That would just be a complete lie. <laughs> um, I found rook f8, which here is classed as a brilliant move, because technically it gives up a rook, even though he's getting mated. But you have to be very accurate here, because rook takes e8 isn't mate. Because the queen takes, and he defends his back rank. Sure, I've got a lot of counterplay, but I'm not better anymore. The reason this is winning after bishop takes f6. After rook f8, you have to see the follow-up, which is queen c8, which looks pretty mental. But the problem is that he's in check, and the only move is rook takes, and then my rook gets in, and my opponent doesn't get a chance to block on either the d8 square or the e8 square, because it looks like he's got everything covered except for queen c8, and I bypass these defences because of the x-ray defence from my rook, and I'm down a full queen, but back rank mate is on the board after two brilliant moves, rook f8 and queen c8. So that's the game, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please drop a like and subscribe so that you get notified when I drop a new video, which is every single day. And with that being said, I hope you have a good rest of your day.